Alright, hi, my name is Jonathan Jimenez, and uh, my issue is that the 2014 World Cup had negative effects for Brazil. I'm going to start off saying, uh, telling you guys what the World Cup is. The World Cup is an international uh, soccer tournament. Uh, most of the world knows soccer by football. So it's an international football tournament uh, hosted every four years, and it consists of 32 national teams. And it's the biggest sporting event in the world. In 2014, it attracted around uh, 3.2 billion viewers, which is roughly 46% of the world, uh, world population. Um, the 2014 World Cup was, um, it was deemed as a big success. It pulled in the biggest amount of tourists. However, uh, once it left, um, a lot of problems um, showed themselves. Um, Many people were uh, relocated due to construction of um, structures for the tournament, and uh, many financial planning was, uh, was poorly done, and that led to uh, different uh, future problems for the nation. Um, so my claim is that the 2014 World Cup had negative effects, and um, my secondary claims are that the, the event created social unrest in the country, the second claim is that it worsened the amount of poverty. And the third, that uh, many of the structures that were built during the tournament have no, uh, no longer use anymore. They're no longer useful. Um, this is important because um, much of the country still um, suffers from extreme poverty due to the event. Um, and many of the structures that are no longer used, they, we still have to pay for them, so the country is still uh, paying off for the stadiums that are basically sitting there. So um, my first secondary, uh, first secondary claim is that it created civil unrest. Um, Brazil won the bid in 2007. However, it took around six years for uh, people to um, feel that they didn't need it anymore. They felt um, they weren't satisfied with it. The reason why they weren't satisfied is because they felt that the money that they could use for public funds such as welfare and such and education was going to the stadium uh, for everything, um, all the building and all that. Um, uh, more than half of the money that was used to fund all the projects um, was public, uh, from public funds. And this also angered a lot of citizens, around 10,000 protesters. Uh, protested the hosting of the World Cup. Um, yeah, so many of them were angry, and they protested. They protested. Uh, my second claim is that the World Cup worsened the amount of poverty. Brazil, um, it's. I'm sure many of you know the favelas. You know the famous images of you know the mountaintops with buildings essentially stacked on top of each other. Well, uh, most of the nation lives this way. It's stricken with extreme poverty. 26% um, of the population lives below the poverty line. 8.5% of the population in Brazil, which is 16.2 million, lives on less than $45 a month. And of these 16.2 million, 4.8 million uh, live with no money at all. Well, the reason why the World Cup worsened the amount of poverty, as, you know, as bad as it was already, when they started constructing um, railways, airports, uh, renovations of stadiums, they relocated about 170 people to areas where it had no water, no electricity. And um, they were left really just to survive and um, with little help from the government. And during the games, um, financial uh, priorities uh, shifted to the uh, for construction of uh, all the stadiums and such. And um, big welfare systems, such as the biggest one, which was the Bolsa Familia, um, received a big uh, pay cut, which um, is bad because it was the largest um, welfare system that uh, helps around 50 million people. So we had 50 million people that weren't getting a lot of the help they needed because of the games, which uh, had a substantial effect on the uh, 
the poverty. And my third claim is that a lot of the stadiums that were used during the games are no longer in use. Uh, there's 12 stadiums built for the games. Um, they're beautiful stadiums. Um, they're beautiful to look at, but once the, um, all the fans left and everything went to normal, they're just sitting there. They're in really remote locations, so there's really no use for them anymore. Um, a lot of the teams that play in them are really small. Um, it's kind of like two local high school teams playing in the room. You know, it's just, it doesn't it doesn't look right, and you know they're not going to generate an amount of money to uh, run the actual stadium. You know, the lights, sewage, water, and um, that hurts the country because one of the big uh, prime examples is uh, is Malagarincha uh, is the was the most expensive stadium. Uh, constructed, it was 80, um, $845 million. Um, it roughly costs about $94,000 just to run the game there with the lights, sewage, and everything. Um, but the two teams that play there only generate about $7,000. And um, the government is leased to paying the rest. Um, and also, that same stadium, the Mine Getting Inside, it's used as a storage space for buses because they really can't find any other use for it because it's a remote location. Well, uh, many speculate that the World Cup is supposed to help a country, and I mean, uh, short term it does. It brought around 5 billion tourists, and it was uh, the highest record of tourists ever in any in World Cup history. However, it only generated around $3 billion revenue because it was $14 billion with all the construction and they only generated 11.3. So it, the profit margin was very small. And um, really it just ended up hurting the poor and um, the poor suffered. And that's why it had negative effects for Brazil. All right, Jonathan, uh, the proposition is clearly identified at the beginning. That's actually the first thing that you say. So uh, I think maybe I would have gone with the other information first. And then you repeat the proposition again. That's okay. It's not a big deal that you repeated it. Uh, but I did, did think that you missed an opportunity to kind of draw us in a little bit more with the background. The background was okay to explain what was going on. There's a clear preview of what the supporting structure is going to be. So uh, we can follow along. And in the body of the speech, you signposted those points very clearly. So that's all also very helpful. The issue about civil unrest seems to be a little underdeveloped. The 10,000 people protested, well, I don't, you know, it sounds to me like there are a lot of people in Brazil, and 10,000 doesn't sound like it's all that significant. Uh, that, I think, needs to be given a little bit more context. If there were riots, if there was violence, if the protests disrupted uh, work or jobs or the economy in any way, that would be helpful. And by the way, you should give us a source citation for this information. You present a lot of things that uh, would probably be classified as factual data, but I don't know that uh, that's factual data. I don't know where you got that information. I don't know whether or not to believe it. There's some statistical information that fits in the same category. So that's the probably the weak part of the speech is the citation of the information. Uh, there's data there. I can tell that you've got information, but you're not citing where it comes from. And I think that that's uh, a problem. We've asked people to do those sorts of things. The, uh, for example, on the second point, when you talk about the uh, impact on poverty, your primary illustration is a cut in the amount of money that goes to the major welfare system that happened there. And I don't know how, m I mean, you mentioned uh, statistics is there was a substantial cut. I don't know how much that cut was or how much it affected the average person who was getting assistance and whether or not that continues to be the case or whether it was just the short-term thing. I think you've got an argument here. I think there's a thing here, but it feels a little bit underdeveloped, and you're just trying to get by with a passing reference to the one piece of information when I think it needs a little bit more development on that. The stadium argument is the one that seems to be the best developed when it comes to um, information because you've got um, you know, examples that you can do comparison on. You've got some uh, uh, factual data about the cost of the stadiums and how much it costs to run those sorts of things. 
There was a nice general piece of information at the end, and again, this is one of those places where I could use some source citation. It said it brought in $3 billion in revenues, but it cost $14 billion to build all these things and accommodate the games, and that seems to me like that is uh, an important piece of information that definitely supports your point, and there's no source citation on that. Now, $14 billion, I gotta admit, that's a lot of money to me. It, it's probably a lot of money to most countries as well, but I don't know what uh, Brazil's GDP is. I don't know what their annual budget is for the uh, government. And so that $14 billion, which you said was mostly paid by the government, I need some context. And that's another place where there's some more information that would be helpful there. All right. Thank you. Everybody's getting up to leave. I'm assuming that there's a problem with the time. Who else is before me? Oh, yeah. I was just one person. Yeah. Okay. Will I be able to still go on Monday? Or is that well, Monday? come ready to go. Okay, yeah, I will. I got three people, and I don't know what happened to our time. All right, no problem. So we'll be Who's got the cards? Don't walk out with them. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, we're presenting on Monday. Uh, priority on Monday is the people who are scheduled, and then when we have time, we'll plug people in. Okay. So the three people that didn't go tonight, they're going to be at the bottom of the pile of stuff. I think we'll probably get to one of them. And then the other two folks will get bumped, but we'll see. Maybe, maybe all those people who schedule on Monday won't show up. We'll hear everybody. <laughs> Stranger things have happened. So we need the, we need your, um, You need the rubric, yeah. which I passed out tonight. You need two copies of the final draft of your outline. Okay. And you need the original draft that has my comments on it. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Uh, I emailed you about uh, changing topics to... Okay. Just yes. So I decided to go with your main claim, which is LeBron's past. 